I like it. Observe, the mother helicarrier watches over her young, who is far more vulnerable than herself, but also has far more play features than herself, but is also far less expensive than herself. I think this, I think this analogy got a little lost. What's going on guys? I'm Josh, this is Josh Build Stuff, and today we are taking a look at the brand new LEGO Avengers Helicarrier. This set was just released in June 2020, costs $120, is recommended for ages 9 plus, and contains 1,244 pieces. This is the second Helicarrier iteration that LEGO has made in recent years. The previous model was definitely made to be a large display set, whereas this is definitely more of a play set. We'll take a look at both of those sets side by side in a few minutes, but first, let's take a closer look at all of the details of this ship, its accessories, and of course, the minifigures. So zooming into this set, we can see that I've got everyone set up here in an action sequence, and with all the minifigures in place, I think this set really comes alive. First, we can look at some of the accessories. This is a uh, little Avengers ship that comes with this set. I think it's pretty neat that they included this. I've got Black Widow in there right now. It has the stud shooter, but the Gatlin gun version, which is always a fun play feature to have um, if you want studs all over your room. The rest of the ship has a few great play features that we can look at right now. The main feature here is, I think, the rotor rotation. So as the ship rolls forward and backwards, there is a gear train running through the whole set that makes the propeller blades each turn when the ship moves, which I think is a pretty neat feature. You can't have a helicarrier without some big old propellers. Another play feature, of course, is the big old gun sitting right up top in the middle of the ship. This style of missile and shooter has been around for a little while. I don't know if this is a revamped version of it, but the Boba Fett ship from back in the day had a version like this. It's got a big red button on the back of it that you push and it fires that massive bullet. So taking a closer look at the ship itself, you can see that it is fairly well detailed. It's definitely sturdy. I can confidently pick it up and move it around, which I think is important for a helicarrier. Uh, it's got a couple of neat little features, but not a ton, uh, besides the surface missile, the rotating blades. It has a little bit of an interior going on here. There are three seats for three minifigures in there if you feel like um, digging them down in there. And then you've got some windows that look into that same space with a little control panel sticker on that front window there. Otherwise, there's not much of an interior as far as the ship is concerned. This middle part is largely dedicated to the mechanical runnings that let the propeller blades spin when that main wheel turns. Speaking of that wheel turning, you can see kind of what's going on here. There are a bunch of little free spinning wheels to help move the overall ship, and then one main rubber wheel that sits against the surface that rotates everything as the ship rolls. Another interesting bit about this set is that it is specifically designed to be played with along with the large MODOK figure. This entire rear section of the ship is dedicated to being a jail cell for a captured MODOK. And so this MODOK figure fits comfortably inside that back bay. You can close him in and then even lock him in with those two little pieces there. You can lock them up there and take them back to Avengers HQ, wherever that happens to be in this version of the universe. Aside from those features, the rest of the ship is pretty much just a large play space for you to act out some battle scenes with the minifigures, who I think we should talk about right now. So I am of the opinion that the minifigures in this set are what really give it a lot of personality. So let's take a closer look at those. The first figure up is this aim agent, but not just a regular aim agent. He's got this cool propeller jetpack kind of thing, kind of like the Vulture has in Spider-Man. And instead of a regular boring old stud shooter, he's got a stud shooter that shoots these cool big rockets. And of course you get extra rockets when you inevitably lose the first couple. The second villain in this set, and what I think is probably the selling point of this set, is this MODOK figure. I guess you can only kind of call him a minifigure. There was a previous version of a MODOK figure which actually looked more like a minifigure. He just had a big weird head. I think that was from a set 
that came out back in 2014. This version is far and away much better, definitely improved, and definitely more true to the character. But as far as the figure, he's cool. He's in his big classic MODOK chair. He's got um, a couple of those same stud shooters that shoot rockets. And he's got some really interesting arm pieces, which are actually like minifigure arms, but they lock into a classic Technic pin, which is very unique. I don't know if LEGO's made stuff like that before, but this is definitely the first instance of these that I have in my collection. So overall, I think this figure is excellent. He's obviously a great piece of this set, and I think he will make a great accessory in future models. Next, let's take a look at some of the heroes in this set, starting with Nick Fury. He's cool, he's got one eye, he's got a trench coat, he is the leader of the Avengers, and if you have a Helicarrier set, you've gotta include Nick Fury. So I think this is a great figure and a must have for this set. Next up, we have Black Widow in a very cool looking black suit. I think this is a slightly different version of the black suit that she just had in the Black Widow helicopter chase set that came out for her own movie. This figure even has painted arms, which is always a great detail to include. She has her nice face on one side and on the back side, her mean face. And you can't have Black Widow without her classic weapon, sharp sticks. Next up is one of my favorite characters, of course, the mighty Thor. He is very cool, rocking his red cape. He's got Mjolnir. I don't know if we've seen this torso piece before, but it's definitely very cool looking, very Nordic looking, and not like anything that was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. The backside even has some nice detail. He has his long blonde hair, and his alternate face is his charged up lightning version. I feel like we've seen this head before. Even so, this version of Thor is very cool and a great addition to this set. Next up, we've got Iron Man, who usually steals the show in whatever set he's in, but in this case, there are so many other great minifigures, he is just one of many in this set. I believe we've seen this armor design before, and we've definitely gotten Iron Man versions with these hover boot pieces that are supposed to look like he's flying. The helmet, I believe we've also seen before, as well as the face. On one side, you've got normal Tony Stark face. On the other, you've got the inside the helmet look which is very cool, but in my opinion, works a lot better when the helmet has the opening and closing visor piece, which this one does not. Another cool thing about this figure is that he's got these repulsors that also have their own play feature where I think you're supposed to flick them from the side and they go shooting out of his hands, which may have been in other sets, but this is the first set where I've seen them. So that's pretty cool that they've introduced a play feature that isn't a blaster or a stud shooter and works for characters like Iron Man. Next up, we've got this very cool looking Captain Marvel figure with her cool looking red hood and her mohawk coming out the top. The really neat thing about this figure is that it is a flying version of this figure. I think this is great for these characters who are supposed to have the ability to fly and especially a helicarrier, which is supposed to be up in the air. And so this can look like she's flying alongside the helicarrier and I think makes for some great playability. Apart from the obviously cool fire effects that come with her, uh, you also get the blonde hair, which makes her look more like the classic Carol Danvers. And like Black Widow, she has a happy face and a meaner face. And last but not least, what may be my favorite figure in this set is this super souped up version of War Machine. He's got a similar flying platform and just looks like there's a ton going on, which I think is the perfect way to portray War Machine. On his back, he's got uh, four different accessories, kind of two rocket looking things with some lasers on the front side. This cool use of that roller skate looking piece to make it look like uh, this stack of missile launchers or shooters of some sort. And then a classic stud shooter to give him some playability. He's even got this wicked futuristic looking alien kind of looking blaster, which is in the process of shooting this big gun, which is great since War Machine is the big gun. Underneath the helmet, we've got, I think, a version of Rhodey's head that we've seen before on the front, normal face, on the back, the inside of the helmet view, just like the Iron Man figure. But again, I think this figure is maybe my favorite out of the bunch. I don't know if it comes in other sets. It's the first version of this figure I have, but I think the cool black and silver looking color scheme with the red accents are just super cool. 
And so overall, this figure, as well as all of the figures in this set, I think are what really bring it to life. Briefly talking about the build for this set, it was not too complicated and not too repetitive, which are both good things. Again, this set was advertised as being appropriate for ages 9 plus, so I didn't expect it to be a terribly complicated build. One interesting thing about this build is that they actually had you build some supports, the underside of the helicarrier, using little yellow 1x2 pieces. And then later in the build, it had you remove all of those pieces once the main wheel was put in place. I thought that was kind of neat. You don't often see LEGO tell you to build something and then unbuild that same thing. Overall, it was a relatively fun build and a good way to spend a couple of hours. Finally, I did say I wanted to show a comparison between this new helicarrier and its predecessor, and as you can see, it's not much of a comparison. The old version is much larger, much more detailed, and like I said, it was much more expensive. The older ship was obviously detailed after the one in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the new one is maybe based on the new Avengers video game, maybe just based on a fun version of a helicarrier. So seeing the two side by side is pretty neat, but obviously we can only expect the two to match up so much. So my overall thoughts on this set, for $120 you get a decent looking ship, some pretty good play features, and some excellent minifigures. Personally, I think the minifigures definitely contributed to that high price point, especially this version of MODOK and these cool flying versions of some of our classic characters. If you were on the fence about picking up this set, I hope this video makes that decision a little easier for you. Personally, I'm excited about this latest wave of Marvel sets. I want to know what you think about them. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, thanks for liking and subscribing. If you want more review videos just like this one, I'll put a couple links to those right here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.